All right, MMAspot.com here at Titans MMA in Halifax, Nova Scotia with Gavin Tucker fighting in the 145-pound class. Uh, how are you doing today, Gavin? Good, thanks. How are you guys doing? Excellent. So let's start off. When did you start training martial arts? Um, martial arts in general, uh, when I was in my teens, I guess, started off with like Taekwondo and Judo and more traditional stuff like that. And uh, I guess uh, about like three years ago, maybe give or take, uh, Met, met Peter Martel and, and the guys there and started training for MMA and Jiu-Jitsu and such. When did you start actually fighting, Gavin? Um, man, I guess like two, two and a half years ago, something like that, maybe two years ago. I'm not good at keeping, keeping dates, I'll tell you. <laughs> did you have any amateur bouts beforehand or did you start right at the professional uh, ranks? Just, just jumped right in the fire. And uh, right now you're sporting quite the impressive record. Why don't you tell us what uh, your record is today? Uh, it's 7-0 right now. Excellent. Let me keep that going for a little while. And yeah, I believe you have six finishes, is that correct? Uh, yeah, the first one was a decision, and I, yeah, the rest, the rest went through. Them, yeah. Now, as a fighter, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the KO or the submission? I don't really have a preference, man, honestly. Like, whatever, whatever comes, I'll definitely try and take it. But uh, I remember three fights ago, I, I called my mom after the fight to tell her that I won, and she said that, uh, so she said, you know, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm okay, Mom. She said, is he okay? And I said, yeah, he's okay too. So if I can get in and maybe get the choke and neither one of us gets too bruised up, that, that, that would be ideal. No one, no one gets too hurt. And uh, I understand you've had uh, some interesting training experience. Uh, so you've uh, trained with Henzo Gracie. Tell us about that first. We went to New York uh, a couple months ago. Henzo actually wasn't there. He was away giving a seminar with uh, oh. It was definitely a great experience to get down there. We were about four days in, in New York and in uh, Manhattan, and got to see, you know, the, the roots of where our black belts and the instructors got their credentials from and stuff. And meet a lot of uh, a really talented dude, high caliber guys. Igor and Gregor Gracie were there, and we got to train and roll there. And, uh, got upgraded to my purple belt uh, while I was there. And just took so much away from the experience, not just uh, physically, but just being in that atmosphere too and you know mo motivation to keep training and stuff like that it's definitely an inspiring place to be if you get a purple belt from Hanzo Gracie it's not uh, a joke either yeah, they make well, you work for it our instructors here if they if they upgrade us they definitely uh, want to make sure we can we can hang in that in that circle so Hanzo Gracie team is definitely you know tough, tough guys anywhere you go and you uh, just got back from Thailand you, it was your second visit tell us a little bit about that uh, another great experience, man. Same as the same as the first. Um, got training in twice a day uh, at Dragon Muay Thai, and uh, which is a great great club out there. And a, and a little bit of training at uh, Phuket Top Team for for the grappling and wrestling and, and stuff like that. And uh, you know, got a got a tan, cut some weight, picked up some skills, came back and now uh, back in the back in the woodshed to kind of drill them. Now, pretty much anybody that comes back from Thailand comes back with an interesting story. You got to have one that you can share with us. Anything weird or interesting happen no, while you're there? No, not really, man. I'm I'm pretty boring. All I did was, was train. I didn't really uh, go outside that circle too much. I got a I got a motorbike over there, which which was fun for me. I got to to rip around a little bit on that, which I don't get to do back here. So I'm kind of kind of miss it right now. What did you find more challenging, driving in Thailand or fighting in Thailand? Oh man. The, the training was pretty pretty tough. Um, but the highways are definitely tough too. If you wanna if you wanna get it on, on drive around Phuket, I guess it's not as bad. I haven't been to Bangkok, but I'm, I'm sure that's uh, a nightmare. But the training was definitely tougher than the driving. They definitely push you there, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's all for a good cause, I guess. Now you have uh, you're scheduled to fight on May 11th, and originally it was. Uh, talked about that you'd be fighting Will Romero, mm -hmm. but that's no longer the case. Tell us about that and what's the plan going forward for the May 11th uh, Extreme Cage Combat event? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure uh, what happened there. Uh, it's all just hearsay. I think rumors and stuff. I'm not even sure that uh, Will even agreed to the fight or whatever, so uh, I heard about him and there were rumors about uh, Adam Lorenz and a few guys there, but uh, right now I'm still looking for an opponent. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say no to anybody. I mean, those are all tough guys, so I just just look forward to whatever whatever I'm told by my management and stuff, you know. 
hopefully, uh, hopefully tougher fights each time because that's what seems to, to make the progress, you know. And uh, you normally fight at 145, but I understand you're willing to fight in other classes. Tell us about that. Um, I fought three times at, at 155, and uh, I have aspirations right now to maybe uh, cut down even more. But uh, we'll, we'll see what that goes. It's a lot of a lot of dieting and stuff involved in that. But um, right now it's, it's 45, and for the upcoming events, uh, looks like it's going to be uh, staying at 45. So. Well, you're already making waves at 45. I, I can't imagine what it'd be like when you're at 35. Yeah, that, that would be nice. I mean, I don't know what that kind of cut would do to uh, energy and, and cardio and stuff like that. But we'll we'll see. I mean, I'm just gonna keep. Uh, Eating the way that I'm eating right now, I'm really enjoying those arrowroot baby biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when you step in the cage, it's it's one of the most lonely feelings in the world. Uh, what's your strategy? Do you, do you, are you nervous or are you excited? Just tell us that process once the cage door gets closed. I definitely I definitely get nervous. I carry those nerves through the whole uh, training process leading up, um, and, and it serves me well because I think that makes me perform a little better. As far as strategy goes, I'd say that depends on who the opponent is and, uh, and what kind of tools and, and threats he brings. So we try to prepare as, as much as we can for that. But uh, the strategy is always the same. Stick to what I'm good at and what I do and, and try to implement that and, and not worry too much. But at the same time, be cautious of what I'm uh, presented with from, from my opponent. So. Now, uh, beyond May 11th, Gavin, uh, you've got a great record. You're an up-and-coming fighter in the East Coast scene. What are your goals? Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, just going to keep training, hopefully taking, taking some more trips um, to different parts of the world to study and, and keep having some, some beautiful experiences and uh, keep winning fights. Uh, I'd like to get you know bigger, bigger fights, bigger bigger shows and, uh, and progress to that, that main goal, you know what I mean, which, which is the big show, and, and hopefully that can happen in the next five years. I'd love to see some things start start rolling in and, and be smiling the whole time. So. Well, thanks for your time today. Do you have any uh, sponsors or uh, training partners, anybody you'd like to thank yeah, uh, today? I, I made a list because I kind of forget if I could have probably wrote it on my hand a little more discreet but uh, it looked like another tattoo there yeah, brother yeah. uh first and foremost uh well speaking of tattoos i guess i'd like to thank exotic game state they hooked me up a couple of days ago it's still fresh and uh, thanks so much guys it turned out great uh i don't have john who, who uh, you know makes those trips happen for me and helps me progress so much um, collision sports for the diet uh trevor godin for the the sports uh for the massage therapy and stuff like that he heals me up when I don't feel like I can train the next day. Um, a bunch of guys who uh, helped help the trip out: uh, Chad Horton, Keith Cornick, John Elliott, Ken Anthony, Steve Lockyer, Jerome Wilson, uh, everybody at Titans, and Pete Martel and the team, and uh, Jack Cameron and, and those whole crew. Those guys hooked me up. Sunny Smoke Meat, that's the newest sponsor. Those guys hooked me up, feed me, uh, feed me the good stuff. Um, what else we got? North Atlantic top team in Newfoundland, that's, that's my gym away from here. And uh, anytime I go back to Newfoundland for the summers or, or whatever like that, these guys keep me training and, and help me out. Uh, Moksha Yoga threw me some free yoga classes, which is, which is always uh, good. I, I, I love that stuff. Um, imagine snowboards in, in Newfoundland. These guys are doing really well. And uh, if you haven't heard of them, check them out. If you snowboard or if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, these guys are making boards from the rocks, and it's really good. Uh, all my training partners here. The Taylor Gang, the Jiu-Jitsu guys who are on the mats right now. These guys, you know, hum humble us every day. Such a talented group uh, and elite as far as as far as you know, Jiu-Jitsu goes. Uh, Mikey Malott, Pete Martel, Pat Carroll, all the training partners uh, that we have here that, uh, that get us ready. Uh, and Nova Physio, uh, Robbie McDonald. This guy helped me out when I whenever I have, whenever I have little injuries and stuff. He he fixes me up. And uh, finally, the Dragon Muay Thai and the guys that I just came from, Rolex. I don't know if you'll see this video, but uh, thank you so much. You helped me so much this month. And as well as uh, Andrew Leone and Anthony Leone from, from Phuket Top Team, who uh, helped me with some, some wrestling and grappling and, uh, and uh, you know, helped, uh, got me ready for uh, to come back to Canada to try to try to wish had some stuff. So. That's about it. Long list, sorry. Long list. Oh, don't apologize. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for your time today and uh, taking some time out for your training. And we'll let you get back to it. And I'm sure you'll uh, gain a following there as you continue to climb. And
especially from the boys at MMAspot.com. Thank you, Gavin. Thanks, guys.